One more thing to ask uh, in this area, what do you think is the best tailored scrum.org exam that exists there? And what is the worst? They're all good. Like I, I, I have to be careful, they're all good. The one that we probably have the most experience with is the PSM one. The PSM one has been around for a long period of time. Lots of people have taken it. The uh, questions have been honed and it's a hard assessment, but it's a good hard assessment. Um, I had, uh, can I share this? Oh, what the heck, I'll share this anyways. Um, we partnered with a gentleman by the name of Dan Vacanti. Dan's gonna hate me for talking about this, but um, we partnered with Daniel Vacanti, who is um, an expert in Kanban uh, and uh, was, was one of the original practitioners of Kanban. And we, uh, we partnered with him to bring some of his knowledge to scrum practitioners, um, which I, I played a role in that. And I, it, was, it was great. And Dan's a super smart guy, super, super smart. Um, Kanban has, was his focus. Um, and he wasn't one of those Kanban practitioners that hated Scrum. You just, I like Kanban better. And once we started working with him and he read the Scrum guide, he's like, the Scrum guide's just common sense. Like uh, it, was, it was delightful working with him compared to some other people in the Kanban community who were a bit more adversarial. Um, one of the things that we asked Dan to do was pass the PSM1. If he's gonna be working with us, he needs to understand Scrum. So he took the assessment uh, and I don't think he got, he, did he get a hundred percent? He got a very high grade. He might, uh, no, I don't think he got a hundred percent. He got a very high grade because he studied, he took it seriously and read through all of the uh, material that we suggest that you, that you do. Um, certainly read through the scrum guide. He talked a lot to other PSTs and other practitioners as well. And I remember when he finished that assessment and got back to me with his score and it was a passing score. It was a good, a good score. He went, this was really hard and it was really good. So the PSM one is pro I think is our ass assessment that has probably gone through the most revisions in that uh, answering 80 questions in 60 minutes, you need to know your stuff. You can't be looking up stuff in Google. You have to just know it. And that one is why I like that one. I think that one's our, is the one that I would say is our best. Um, the one I dislike the most, like you had yours, is PAL, PAL -E, the PAL assessment. Um, and it, for similar reasons, the leadership role that the PAL is covering is one that I've, I've, I don't have a lot of experience with. Um, I'm, I've never been a CIO or a C-level executive. Um, I worked a little bit with them in my time as a consultant, but I haven't, I haven't certainly haven't held the, held the position. Um, I spend most of my time working with teams. So the Pell assessment, I think the first time I took it, I failed. I think the second time I took it, I got like just 86 or something, just barely a passing, passing grade. A lot of it is because I just don't have that mindset and don't have that experience. So I should struggle with it. I should not just pass it easily. And that's kind of what I like about our assessments. They're fair. If you know your stuff, you'll pass. If you don't know your stuff, you're going to struggle. My very first attempt at the, the essay based PSPO assessment. So it used to be PSPO two. It's now PSPO three. Um, I wanted to teach product ownership. So to teach product ownership, to teach our product owner course as a trainer, I need to go attend a class and then I need to pass all the assessments. I failed the first time and got feedback. And at this point, it, the feedback came from Ken directly. And he basically said, yeah, you're not ready to teach this course. You don't have the product owner mindset. You're thinking like a scrum master. You're thinking like a developer. You're not thinking like a product owner when you're answering these questions. So I don't want you teaching this class, which hurts. <laughs> I thought it was a smart guy. And to have someone like Ken say, yeah, you know, you're not as smart as you think you are was not great, but it challenged me to go learn more. I actually spent some time as a product owner uh, and older, oh, I learned a lot. Being an agile coach or being a scrum master or being on a development team, you think you know a lot about product ownership, but then go actually be a product owner. Oh my God, what an experience that you have. And, and 
even when I was a product owner, there were pieces that I, I'm still learning, like some of the marketing pieces, sales and marketing, I'm still a little, not as strong as I'd like to be. Um, budgeting obviously is a, is a big part of being a, a product owner. And I know we've got lots of product owners out there. They're, they're certainly good product owners, but they may not appreciate to be an awesome product owner, all the different things you need to know. It's not just about writing user stories and, and attending sprint reviews and ordering product backlogs. It's a lot more than just that. And our higher level assessments cover that. 